what a way to start. In their hearts, true competitors love nothing more than to do battle on the world's biggest stage. And in the pantheon of marble racing, there's nothing bigger than this. Hello, everybody. I'm Greg Woods, and I'm thrilled to welcome you to the first ever installment of Marbula One here at the Savage Speedway. And as we saw in qualifying, this track has not been kind to the Savage Speeders. Our grid lined up and ready to go. It's the O'Rangers at the start, lights are on, and we're rolling around the turn. The O'Rangers lead coming off the grid. They all, nearly all at the front, opt to the outside. 10 laps in this race, and the O'Rangers got a bad jump off the ramp. They fall back to third place. Galactic and the Hazers are up in front. Snowballs in fourth, hounding the top three. Outside of Galactic, way up front as we enter the front stretch for the first time. Looks like we do have a couple that come through the pit lane. No real penalty for doing that, but the field locked as they come up the conveyor belt for the first time. Galactic out in front. Team Primary makes the jump to second place. And then nearly fending off a challenge there on the inside by the Hazers. And now they fall back, getting completely swarmed on the inside. The O'Rangers are fighting back just a little bit. Snowballs up into second now. Galactic have lost that giant lead that they had down the front stretch on lap number one. Coming across in lap number two, we do have a lead change. The Snowballs out in front. They drift to the inside to try to block. Now back to the outside. Contact between Galactic and Primary across the line to end lap number two. Hazers up into fourth. Mellow Yellow make an appearance up into fifth. You hold your breath just slightly as they come up the conveyor belt. Down they come on lap number three now. Several more opting for the inside line after that first set of corners coming off of the jump. Snowballs handling things pretty well here. Primary in second. Savage Speeders up into third place, starting dead last and 16th are now trying to make a move for second. They're in great position here to try to win the first race of the entire season on their home course. Up they come and it's gonna be neck and neck, Snowballs and Primary. Who gets the better jump off the ramp? And it is Team Primary. Savage Speeders holding on to third. They've got a little bit of a gap. They'll move to the inside. Top two take the outside. Snowball's trying to set up through the S's to make a move through that final hairpin. This is the kind of course that you have to set things up several corners in advance if you want to make it work. Running on the ragged edge of adhesion. Out onto the front stretch they come, and a good launch off the corner by Savage Speeders, but they hit the attenuator of the pit lane. That slows them down. Several lengths go by, and they also have a brief difficulty getting onto the conveyor belt. Primary, their lead, stretching out now on lap number five, halfway through this race. They opt to the inside, snowballs go to the outside. Galactic in third, now Savage Speeders having to deal with the Green Ducks back behind them. The Green Ducks would love to stop their charge for the front and get themselves past the Savage Speeders. Out onto the front stretch, everybody avoiding that sign now. And also, I think, trimmed it back a little bit. Down they come here and some good moves being made just as the camera cuts away. Snowballs having a little bit of pressure now from Galactic. Primary continues to stretch their lead. And as I say that, a slow launch off of the conveyor belt and it's neck and neck with the Snowballs. Now to the inside, Galactic moves and gets second place. Well set up there, they position themselves perfectly. The S's here and now the Savage Speeders have dropped off quite a bit. They've fallen back several spots now and their chance at getting on the podium has it evaporated. Also, we get a lead change. Galactic, with some contact down the front stretch from the top three marbles, gets all the way into first place. Team Galactic, starring at the helm, leading team primary. That's Prim. The Snowballs, they've chosen Snowy. And a little bit of difficulty now with the Hazers who jump on by him for third. The Hazers led by Hazy. Team Galactic around the final turn. Out onto the front stretch. I keep forgetting that the start finish line is actually one more turn after that. You usually think of it as on the front stretch, but with the conveyor belt set up, things are a little bit different here in Marbula 1. It's going to take some getting used to, but we'll get there. Now into the final couple of laps of this race. The Hazers, big loss of speed. Team Primary closes right up and jumps straight over the curbs. We have a lead change coming off of the jump. The Hazers briefly had it. Galactic takes it back. Primary in third. You nudge off that inside wall. It lets you shoot off the curbs, and generally that looks to be the quicker way to do it. Then you follow the stagger of the track and lean your way to the inside before missing that little chevron that sends you back to center. Now into lap number nine. Galactic and the Hazers up in front. O'Rangers are pole sitters all the way down in fifth. But this is anybody's race thus far, heading into the penultimate lap. Moving to the inside, Hazers. 
Now, on the inside of the next turn, Galactic gets by. Already several lengths lead for them. Team Primary looks to pounce off the momentary slowing. That may make, let Galactic get a big lead heading into the final lap. They're slow off of that turn though, and they head into the pit lane. Also, Hazers do the same. It's a slightly slower way around, but not the end of the world. Galactic will have a narrow lead coming off the ramp. Can they hold it? They jump to the side a little bit, but they do hold the lead into the final lap of the opening Grand Prix of Marmula One. Two to the outside, one to the end. That's the Hazers on the inside. Now they get a great launch off the jump and move into second place. Galactic still up in front. Launch around those curves. Snowball's holding in fourth and a big gap back to our pole sitters. The O'Rangers with Clementine. Off the final turn. On the front stretch, heading into the final term, I should say. Team Galactic up in front. The Hazers are going to close right up in on them around the final turn. It will be Team Galactic. And Starry getting the win. Across the line, the rest of the competitors come in front of the stands. Those are prime seats right there. Speedy from the Savage Speeders did recover and set the fastest lap on lap number three. A bonus point going to them. That's why you see them in green. So congratulations to Snowy, Hazy, and the very first Marbula 1 GP winner for Team Galactic, Starry. So we take a look at the standings after race number one. 25 points to the winner, 18 for Hazers, 15 for the Snowballs, the Limers, and several others down at the bottom are yet to get any points. Our next race will be at the O Raceway. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more. As we've reached race number two of Marbula One, is there already talk of a host's curse? Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. Were it not for a stumble from Mary from Team Primary, the O'Rangers may be starting dead last in their home Grand Prix, just as the Savage Speeders did at the Savage Speedway one week ago. Instead, they will start second to last at the O-Raceway. An 11-turn track that you see has a sand portion as the backstretch. Two splits will meet our competitors in the first sector alone. There will be a lot of jostling for position, as you see. The starting lineup. Ready to go for the second Grand Prix here in Marbula 1. Lights are on. And we're rolling. A great jump out of the line for Smoggy from the Hazers. Takes the lead as everybody moves to the outside through split number one. Split number two really stratifying the field there. There's a lot of indecision on which way to go. Waspy hangs in second place. The pole sitter trying to track down the leader, but having a little bit of trouble back behind. Who gets a nudge off of these berms through the sand for the first time? And Billy from the Green Ducks moves up into second place and is hounding Smoggy as they head out onto the front stretch here to complete lap number one. Rapidly from the Savage Speeders. Started middle of the pack and is already up to third place. As you see the splits right there as they come up the conveyor belt for the first time. Take a little breath. Waspy falls back to fourth. Smoggy's lead is growing. Billy from the Green Ducks sees three marbles back behind as Rapidly just decides to go down the catwalk on that split instead of choosing a side. A couple of very slow marbles back behind. I think that was Snowflake from the Snowballs, one of the two that is trailing well behind the rest of the pack. In the meantime, that gap up front is coming down just a little bit. Billy has found his footing and is now a big burst of speed off the penultimate corner. A little nudge down the front stretch and across the line to head up the conveyor belt. He's going to be lockstep with Smoggy as they come off to start lap number three. And a great launch off the conveyor belt and across the line. They move to the outside. Rapidly makes a move now just one second back. Again, thinks about going down that catwalk, but instead heads off to the left side. Does that set him up better for the final turns of sector number one? Down the sand portion they come. John back and forth, and Billy takes the lead. A move coming right off of the sand. They juke back and forth, and I think Smoggy was maybe trying to lay down a block, and instead it ended up decreasing his speed. Same thing here, rapidly to the outside, and around the final turn, up into second place. As we begin lap number four in what's already been a frenetic race. Billy now out in front by, by one and a quarter, and Waspy has fallen off the conveyor belt. Landed on the finish line, also hitting Rojo Dos while he got stuck at the pit exit. And we're gonna have our first safety marble of the race. A potentially dangerous situation down by the conveyor belt. Let's see if we can try to figure out what happened here. So I believe that the safety marble may come out and, and get Waspy going again. If, although the field is coming pretty close to that as well, so we'll have to see if any of them end up nudging him free again, and we'll be back underway, and I think that's going to happen. Let's see if anybody makes contact. 
we're back to green. All right. So we'll have to take a look. It was a local yellow, so passing was allowed in some places. But Waspy is now one lap behind. Billy up in front, able to control the pace really well here. And they made some great moves through sector number one to blow out that lead. Rezzy now into second place. Smoggy as rapidly in Bolt fighting between the two of them. Look at this gaggle of marbles as they come down the pit straight. Smoggy kind of creating a train behind. Ooh, getting a little bit out of sorts there. Rezzy and Rapidly locked together as they come into the conveyor belt to start lap number six. And the top 11 marbles are all separated by fewer than five seconds. Billy holds on. Most of the marbles opting for that inside line, but every once in a while you'll see a couple take to the outside. Is that the better way to go? Either way, right now, Billy has this race in command for the Green Ducks, and now rapidly moves up into second place. I say that, now watch out. A slow sector coming out of the sand sees that gap decrease ever so slightly. What can rapidly do to track down the leader? What's the gap now? 2.22 seconds. Smoggy back at 2.64. Billy already starting on lap number seven. Just a couple of laps to go after this. Rapidly to the outside. And we'll try to go right down the middle once again. They like that line. I don't know that it's the quicker way, though. Smoggy right up on him and drafting down the sand. Well, hold on. Now they lose out big time. They were neck and neck, so something must have gone terribly wrong through the couple of apices that we missed underneath the sand. Around the turn here, Billy up the conveyor belt. What was the lead this time? 247. It's growing. The Green Ducks looking to claim their first victory in Marbula One. Rapidly to the outside, do they try to do the catwalk again here? No, now moving to the inside partially to block Smoggy, who is right behind. Line line, who was the first runner in all of qualifying yesterday. Has some time to make up here, but it's a great move there. Smoggy briefly took second place, but rapidly says not today as they exit the sand. And on to the front stretch. Around the turn there, Billy's lead. What is it going to be here? It has shrunk. 1.52, down by nearly a second. Does Rapidly have anything for the Green Ducks? One lap to go. The top three, all within striking distance, all within two seconds. Smoggy wants to get by Rapidly to try to have a go at Billy up front. Can Billy keep it off the walls? He does. Rapidly, bends off a charge there. Smoggy wanted a look. It's still for the podium, but what order? Billy, onto the front stretch, around the final turn, and the Green Ducks are gonna win the race. Rapidly comes in second, Smoggy could not mount a charge, and finishes in third. Then Limelight, Bolt, Snowflake up next, to round out the top six. Yellup, Rezzy, Hive, Anarchy, Mimo, Pulsar, Rojo Dos, Orangin, Mary, and of course Waspy, one lap behind. Quacks galore, the Green Ducks celebrating, and Billy picked up the fastest lap of the race. One extra point for the Green Ducks. Good job from the Savage Speeders, though, to have another top five finish. This time it's on the podium. Speed has been key for them. They picked up the fastest lap in race number one. Oh, here's the yellow incident. Oh, look at that. Tumbling backwards there, and all the way down. Oh my goodness, that could have been terribly dangerous. Thankfully, nobody left the track. Fastest lap, 34-3-1, so quite a ways off of qualifying speeds. But now at the top of the standings, the Hazers move up. The Green Ducks jump six into second place. And consistency has been pretty key for the Savage Speeders, too. They are in third. Next race will be at the Mo Motorway. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Stay tuned for more. After our most electric qualifying yet, two rivals will sit next to each other on the starting grid, staring down a 180 degree turn before a tricky first sector descends them onto the fastest part of any course that our competitors have seen for this entire season. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. The third Grand Prix of Marbula One, just about ready to go with two splits in the second sector and a speed boost as they head into that far hairpin. We have a pit straight and a front stretch that will lead us into the final turn in front of the grandstand and across the finish line to the conveyor belt. A fast lap with a total length of a little over 12 meters. Three sectors here, and as we've seen from the timing loops, anything can change over the course of it. There you see the starting lineup. 
Only separated by four hundredths of a second, but what will it be in the race? The lights are on, we're ready to go. And we're rolling around the turn quickly. And a slow start here as the dive begins. Several going high on the curves, couple opting for the inside line, and now to the outside of the first split. It's Clutter who got the jump off the pole. Mallard up into second place, Hazy in third. Team primary, the pole sitters fall all the way back to fourth. Now onto the front stretch and across the line for the first time. Clutter holds the lead, but it's gonna be neck and neck coming off of the belt for second place, a three marble race. Mallard holds the spot, Hazy in third, but now we've got a lead change. Mallard jumps through the first sector and takes the top spot. Around the outside of the first split, now goes to the inside of the second, and that ends up being the wrong way to go. Clutter is losing a little bit of speed here. Mallard. Only watch as Clutter stretches off into the distance. Across the line they come. They are going to be neck and neck again, this time for third place. Clutter's lead a little under two tenths. Primary, and Mallard gets the jump off of the conveyor belt. Mallard and Clutter trying to stretch the lead over Prim from Team Primary. Starry up into fifth right now. Into the far hairpin they go. A little nudge off that Chevron and a bump off the wall. We've got a lead change. Clutter takes the top spot. Mallard and Clutter have been going back and forth several times, and it looks like Clutter will try to protect the inside line coming off the conveyor belt this time. Mallard tries to snake his way through, and now we've got a big bunch up into third place. Primary trying to hold back the floodgates from Hazy and Starry. Going right over that second split there. Clutter doesn't seem to have lost any speed. In fact, the gap seems to be growing a little bit. Mallard trying to track him down, trying to get into the draft. He opts for the inside, does Clutter, and up the conveyor belt they come. This time he'll opt for more the racing line, it appears. And we'll duck to the inside. You see the gaps? And we have a couple of changes back behind that. Looks like the Savage Speeders working their way. Speedy is into fourth. Trying to get a little bit closer to primary, carries some more speed around that turn, and the left-hander is gonna make a move here. And loses out, but look at up front. The gap has come all the way down again. Mallard trying to size up Clutter as we enter the start of lap number five. One-tenth between them. It stretches just a little bit on the exit, and now it closes up once again. Looks like everybody's going to opt for that outside line this time. A couple ducking to the inside. Mallard will take the outside line, and look at the speed boost that it gained. That made a big difference, and now it's anybody's race up front. How does Clutter respond? Coming across here. And having a little bit of trouble, it looked like. Was that Mallard that had all kinds of trouble getting onto the conveyor belt? I know everybody was a little bit concerned after Waspy's incident in the last race. And look at this up front. Neck and neck, and the old Rangers with Clementine take a brief look into second place. They fall back into third now. Clutter still up front, primary, holding station now, trying to get one spot back up to where they started this race from the pole. Laps ticking down, though, this race taking a little bit longer to get onto the conveyor belt. There are several that have trouble. Clementine is one of them. Notice there are 13 laps in this race as opposed to the 10 that we've had from the last one. Clutter and Primary have really closed up, opting for different lines here, and they bump against each other. Is Primary going to have a go on the inside? Yes, he does. Primary have gotten up to the front. Prim making the move. And Prim will try to duck to the inside, and the over-under works for Clutter, who takes the lead right back from Prim. This has been one heck of a race so far. I don't know if anybody's had a chance to breathe. Look at some of the other competitors farther back. This is really stratifying the field. As this race, we could end up seeing some lapped marbles at some point if this continues. Clutter is up front. Hazy has taken second place. Clementon for the O'Rangers is up into third. Speedy for the Savage Speeders in fourth. They've been consistent thus far. And ooh, a little trouble that time getting onto the conveyor belt, and that's going to elevate Clementine to second place. Competitors having to walk that fine line of not being too aggressive. The Waspy incident taught them that in the last race. They know the risks that they take coming into this, and it's high risk, high reward. But unfortunately, if it goes wrong, it can go very wrong. They know the risks. They are willing to take them. The lead, growing for Clutter, enters the conveyor belt pretty well, as does Clementine and Prim. They're going to be very close, just a length apart as they exit the conveyor belt. A little nudge off the wall might slow them down a little bit. That lets Clutter stretch the lead ever so slightly. Nearly a second and a half up front, heading into the final couple of laps. Takes the speed boost. The top three, top four all do. The more those second place ones battle, the better it is for Clutter. Prim and Clementine, if they can stay locked together, that is all the better for Clutter up front. 
2.3 is the gap as they exit the conveyor belt to start the penultimate lap. The dominant performance this could be for Clutter if he can keep that up. Do we start to see those lap marbles coming in? We might. Getting on around that far hairpin. On to the front stretch now. Coming across the line. And the gap has under a second. Under eight tenths, in fact. Clutter and Prim. Also watch behind. Hazy seems to be showing a little bit of speed. Final lap. And look at the speed coming off there. A huge bump by Prim. Needs one more go. Is going to size him up down the pit straight and around into the front stretch. Are they going to make the move to the outside? It's not going to work. Clutter takes the win by five hundredths of a second over Prim from Team Primary. Hazy finishes in third and on the podium, well in front of Mallard and Clementine. What a finish that was. Well, we knew that after qualifying, that was gonna be a really close race. And hey, Clementine, by the way, gets the bonus point for fastest lap. Doesn't finish on the podium, but they are gassed. 13 laps, more so than the usual that they have to run. <laughs> This was one entertaining Grand Prix. There's a lot of highlights to piece together here. So many marbles getting a chance up at the top. We had several different lap leaders, numerous lead changes. Here's the finish. There, though I know, no, actually that was not the finish, but it was kind of a sizing up for the finish. There's the finish. <laughs> it was even closer, in fact. I loved that over under from that move to take the lead. There you see the overall standings, the Hazers, really the top four all stay at the top unchanged as we head into the Hive Drive. Thanks for watching everyone. Race four in the first season of Marbula One welcomes us to the Hive Drive, hosted by the Hornets. An interesting track and a hive through which we race today. Hey everybody, I'm Greg Woods. As we reach the midway point of the season, things begin to ramp up for these competitors. Now, I don't necessarily mean that literally for the conveyor belt because after some discussions and some difficulties, the JMRC decided that after this race, the conveyor belt will be tweaked a little bit for competitor safety. 13.2 meters is the length of this course as you see the starting lineup. A great battle for pole that developed yesterday. Some fast times were laid down early and the challenge was met. Who will win out in the race though? The lights are on. And we're rolling around the turn. Orangen in the top spot as they begin to build momentum around the outside. We get a little look from Waspy, who takes second place. Orangen stretching up into the lead as they begin the twisty bit through sector number one to sector two. And in the hive, if you stay off the walls, you're going to have a lot of speed on the exit. And the top three or four all do. Out onto the front stretch for the first time, and it's a big lead for Orangen. Start at second. Take a look at the gap there, 1.18. Keep an eye on that. Yellup back in third as well. And coming off the conveyor belt, looks like Yellup has a little bit of speed to challenge Waspy through the first couple of turns, closing in ever so slightly, just a few lengths back. Orangen still up in front, Lime Lime in fourth, rapidly in fifth, but a loss of speed there and shooting into first is Waspy. It just goes to show you a momentary lapse can cause a huge swing in the race. And the momentum continues to be down. And actually, look at this. All three are gonna be exiting the conveyor belt at the same time. They had some difficulty, it's neck and neck. Waspy up in front, but Yellup takes the lead. That was one where we thought that if you could have entered the conveyor belt cleanly, it was no way that anybody was gonna challenge on the exit, but it was a dead heat. Through the hive this time. Look at there in third place, Pulsar has gotten by, and Orangen continues to fall back into fifth now. The lead up front for Yellup is a little under a second. Pulsar in third, rapidly in fourth, Orangen all the way back to fifth. Hey, there's Mimo up in sixth, looking for Team Momo's first points of the entire season. Oh, but a couple of slow exits through sector number one. Yellup being hounded up front by Waspy, riding the curbs around the outside. Nice line being taken there through those final curves to enter the hive. Orangen tries to bump up against rapidly, but can't find the speed there, gets hung up on the wall, and loses fifth place to Smoggy. Waspy takes the pit lane for some reason, and it's going to be locked up in a dead heat with rapidly coming off the belt. Look at the lead that Yellup had 1.29 exiting. I think that's growing. 
here on lap number five of 11. We had a 13 lap race in the previous Grand Prix. Look at the train that's developing for second place. Waspy moves to the outside, through the hive, takes second place. Waspy, our pole sitter, his last time out. And this time had pole briefly. Lead up front, a little under a second for Yellow. Pulsar takes second place, trying to eye up our leader. Farther back, the host Hornets with Hive. Four seconds back in 10th place. Mary struggling tremendously at the back also. Mary's had a tough time, started last in her last race. And only finished 15th, aided by Waspy's one lap down incident with the conveyor belt. Yellow stretched the lead by four hundredths, although this time it's over rapidly instead of Pulsar. Pulsar fell back to fourth, Waspy back there. Look at Orangen challenging all three of them there. Bumps up against Pulsar and wants to get by. Oh, a little shove off the wall there, says, give me some space. Up front, Yellow, lead coming down. Through the hive, hung up on the wall briefly. That looks rapidly shoot into the lead. And as a result, Yellup goes into the pit lane. The Hive can really get people out of sorts. Waspy having a little trouble getting onto the belt. But if you get hung up in the Hive, it can put you into the pit lane, and it continues the disadvantage all the way down the front stretch. Rapidly in Pulsar, lead Yellup, who goes high up onto the curbs there. And here comes Orange into the inside, not gonna be there. The door was shut. Waspy, can keep Yellup at bay. Rapidly stretching up into the lead, Pulsar as well as we come up the belt. What's the gap? Over a second now, Waspy, two and a half seconds back. Rapidly living up to his name, exiting the belt there. And really our top four is as spread as they've been for a while. This time a little train beginning to develop behind Orangen. Bump off the walls there pretty hard, entering the hive. Can rapidly keep it off the walls, no, and that lets Pulsar take the lead. It really is a huge speed differential if you get hung up. Rapidly gonna have to fight back in these final couple of laps. A Little bit of a breather here. Three hundredths as they cross the line. Exiting the belt, it's a little bit more. Penultimate lap, Pulsar. Holds the lead, Waspy back in third behind Rapidly, then Yellup and Smoggy. And Smoggy having a decent run. But had fallen back early on, got up into the lead, fell back, was running exactly where he was in qualifying. Pulsar, ready to finish the penultimate lap, rapidly goes down the inside in the pit lane. Interesting strategy there, they're gonna be fairly close, 38 hundredths apart as they enter the final lap. Pulsar, quick off the belt. Rapidly, trying to track him down, this is a big speed boost also for Yellup, who tries to get by Waspy for third, nothing there. Exiting the first sector, Meanwhile, up front, Pulsar, stretching the lead. The Hive could make or break this entire race. They stay where they were. Pulsar, around the final turn, is gonna cruise across the line and wins the Hive Drive Grand Prix. Rapidly in second, Waspy rounds out the podium in front of Smoggy and Yellup. Hey, how about this? Hive finishes in seventh. And did Nemo, oh, Nemo in the top 10. That means that Nemo picks up the first points for Team Momo. Hazers, in the meantime, pick up an extra point for setting the fastest lap of the race. Congratulations up front, though, to Pulsar. Started all the way back in ninth. Also, don't forget to vote for Marble of the Day. Is that good enough to earn him those honors? I don't know, but there were some great lead changes. Overtakes in the top five. Up top there, riding that curb, and then shooting down in front of Yellup to make sure that Yellup is not going to get by. The Hazers still hold the top spot in the team standings. Team Galactic jumps up two spots, one clear of the Savage Speeders. The Green Ducks fall down to fourth, but they will be hosting the next race at Greenstone. Thank you for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time. In the ongoing battle to tame all of the tracks in Marbula One, Greenstone throws something a little different at our competitors today. Hello everybody and welcome to the fifth race in Marbula One. I'm Greg Woods. Greenstone has 23 corners and is one of the longest tracks that anyone will see on the Marbula One calendar. It also requires a slightly different skill set. It's not a blazing fast sort of a circuit. The opening set of turns, which you see there, there are a lot of them, 
require precision, more so than speed. If you set yourself up well, you could pay the dividends a little bit later on. Teams have tried to figure out which marble to put in this race. Did they make the right call? We're about to find out. And we're rolling. Around the first turn they come, Yellow with the lead. Trying to stretch this one out, and it's a two marble race early with Orangen, who gets by into P1. Bolt holds third place as they cross through that white line that marks the end of the first sector. Oh, and a jaunt off the wall completely stops Yellop's momentum. Completely, I mean, just almost came to a stop. And that lets fall back to third place. Orangen up in front. Will they pick the right side, and I mean the correct side, of that little separation as they come for the first time onto the front stretch. It's Orangen with a huge lead over Bolt. Momo only in fourth place over Lime Lime and Hive. Rojo Uno and Rapidly, who is our leader in the individual championship, comes in in eighth. Bolt out in front ahead of Yellup, but those two switch spots for second place several times through the first sector. The longer that they fight, the better it is for Orangen, whose lead continues to build up front. A train developing, though, through this twisty serpentine bit in the upper part of the course as they head on to the backstretch. Yellup into second place, got by Bolt, who is now having a little bit of trouble with Momo. Also watch Hive back in fifth. Is anybody going to take that pit lane? And we have our first taker who goes to the outside. That may not be the quickest way around this course. Shooting off the curves is Yellup nearly three seconds behind Orangen in P1. We also get a look into Rojo, D Rojo Uno into third place. As soon as I say that, I was about ready to say fourth. He already took third, trying to eye up Bolt for fourth. Orangen trying to keep it off the walls or keep it off of the slowest bits as it begins to build speed in the lower portion of this greenstone course. Limeline back to eighth now. Momo back to sixth. Waspy makes an appearance in the top eight. Yellup falling all the way back to fifth, regains a spot into fourth. Bolt on the outside fighting with Rojo Uno. Up they come and the gap has come down quite a bit. What was three seconds is now a little under two. Orangen. Needs to pick up the pace just a little bit, unless he's trying to manage the gap up front. Bolt now sees Yellup behind. And Rojo Uno not too happy about that. A little nudge there off the wall that actually sends Yellup forward slightly and right on the tail of Bolt. Remember, the more that those second place fight, the better it is for Orangen. Reminder also in this race, we have four of the top 10 individual leading marbles in the championship. Hazers have been up front in the team standings, partly because of a great string of podium finishes. That came to an end recently. What's the gap now? As they streak across, it's back up. Orangen may be managing the gap indeed. Came down from three seconds, a little under two. Now it's back to a little under three. And a great battle developing for second place, as it has for most of this Grand Prix. Just nine laps this time, as opposed to our usual ten or more. Here comes the gap down. Bolt starting to mount that challenge. Orangen yet to respond. Out to the far corners of the track they go to head onto the back stretch. Yellup regains some momentum back into third place. Waspy in fifth. How about Starry making an appearance now? Into eighth. Had a little bit of work to do. Slow off the penultimate turn is Orangen. This is going to be much closer than three seconds. It's under half a second, in fact. Let's slow off the belt. That lets Bolt close right up. A bump off the curves. Bolt has taken the lead. Orangen. Nearly threatened to lose second place as well, and does to Yellup. All coming undone for Orangen here on lap number six. That hard hit off of the curbs, almost similar to what we saw Yellup do through this very section earlier in this Grand Prix. Bolt suddenly sees things stretch out in front. Things are looking good. Rojo Uno hanging back there and forth, has a little bit of a gap over Momo behind. That could let him set up. A nice little charge here. Sometimes if the marbles are not worried as much about what's going on behind them and they get into that clear space, they can string together good, consistent laps that are going to make a difference farther on in this race. Into the final couple of laps, though, it is Bolt still out in front, exiting the first sector with a decent lead over Yellup and Orangen, who is trying to respond after that one momentary lapse catapulted what was a huge lead back into a third place running. Rojo Uno, Momo, Waspy, Starry, and Lime Lime making up the top eight. We see some good moves farther back, but we really haven't seen much from the hosts yet. Obviously, everybody, every week, wondering if the host curse is real. 
And right now, how about that lap from Bolt? Stretching it over three and a half seconds into the lead. That is exactly what you want if you are a Thunderbolts fan, but having a little trouble through the first sector, and just like that, the lead is gone. Penultimate lap of this nine lap Grand Prix, and it's still anybody's race. Orangen makes a move for second place, tries to eye up Bolt as they head to the far corners, around the hairpin up there onto the back stretch. And who's going to get the better launch? They opt for different sides of the separation, and Orangen carried more speed around the turn and takes the lead. A bump off the attenuator for Bolt, and he might lose second place as well. Orangen back up front. And we have seen the Orangers run pretty well at different times in this season. Orangen with a one and a half second lead, but a long way to go, 14 plus meter lap. Orangen does not have this one wrapped up quite yet. Bolt still has plenty of time to make a charge. Yellow, Rojo Uno, Lime Lime. Those three are all in a big bunch. Slow off that turn, onto the back stretch. Orangen, just a few corners to go. Can he keep it clean? Off to the right, hits the inside of the exit. Now through the penultimate turn. Cleanly onto the front stretch. Around the last turn, and Orangen wins the Grand Prix at Greenstone. Bolt takes second, Yellow third, Lime Lime a great recovery up into fourth, Rojo Uno, then Momo, and Mallard for the host Green Ducks. Just gets in the top 10 with a solid ninth. The Arrangers are partying tonight. Bolt also picking up that one extra point, you see the purple number there to signify that, for fastest lap in the race. Congratulations to our podium finishers. Orange, a great run. Get up into first. It was a good battle even in qualifying between these. Orange starting second. Stretch things out once he got the lead. There's a good battle between those two with that nudge there putting Bolt into first place. But then the retake. And what an exciting Grand Prix this was. The Hazers still hold the top spot in the standings, just barely over Team Galactic and the Savage Speeders. The Orangers jumping four spots above the Green Ducks. Our next Grand Prix at the Short Circuit. Until then, stay tuned and subscribe for more. So long, everyone. As we head down the home stretch here in the Marbula One season, the Hazers hold a narrow one-point lead over Team Galactic and a further five over the Savage Speeders. Hello, everybody. I'm Greg Woods. The Short Circuit definitely lives up to its name, in several ways. It is a quick track for being just a little under 12 meters in length. Those eight turns may look deceptive. The first sector alone has caught out several marbles. Even though it's just two turns, a drop, and a straightaway, that sometimes will lose a marble up to one second or more in a single lap. How will the competitors you just saw there react to this course? The lights are on. They're in the blocks and ready to go. And we're rolling. Prim with a slow start out of the gate, and it is Speedy breezing by from second into first place. A challenge from Vespa as she goes high on the curves to the outside. Both outside lines around these turns into the far chicane. It is Speedy who grabs the lead and then enters the pit lane. Around the outside goes Prim and into P1 once more. There originally they started the lap. Four tenths of a second to Speedy and then Nemo, Pulsar, and Smoggy. Anarchy. And then a whole jumble of marbles fighting for that next position. Prim with a commanding lead early on, but if Marbula 1 has taught you anything, it means that doesn't mean much at all. Prim with a little bump off of the pit lane wall. Nearly everybody opting to go to the outside. A challenge now from Smoggy, bumping against Speedy as they enter the conveyor belt. They'll be neck and neck coming off of it as well. Prim exits cleanly. Smoggy, second place over Speedy. Then Wispy and Shock briefly up there into fourth place. Smoggy into fourth. Now back behind Wispy, Speedy is tracking down Prim through the second sector into the third. And now, they nearly all jump into the pit lane. Prim stays out. The gap, just a little over half a second over Wispy and Snowy, Smoggy, and Shock and Yellow. Down the back stretch, big charge of speed coming here as they bump off that Chevron. Speedy right on the tail of Prim. Into the chicane. Neck and neck between the two of them. And now Prim will go to the pit lane. That'll let Speedy work around the outside. A drag race down the front stretch across the line. What was the gap there? Two hundredths. And just like that, Prim retakes the lead. Speedy to the inside, down the back stretch. Up to P1, exiting the first sector. 
Pulsar, Shock, Wispy, Snowy, Billy, and Smoggy make up the top eight. And now, Speedy takes the pit lane again, and Prim breezes by back into first. I mean, this will be a good battle coming off of the conveyor belt with Pulsar, who just narrowly took second place. Will Pulsar be able to hold it? Yes, indeed. Down the back stretch they go. That is a big lead for Prim. Nemo in seventh place. Anarchy fighting with Billy for the top eight. He's into the outside. Prim down the front stretch with as big a lead as we've seen for quite some time. Over a second now. Several laps there. It was under half a second. Look at this three-way fight coming off the belt right there. Who's going to get the better of it? It's Snowy. Wispy cannot get by down the curves, but does on the front stretch, only to go high off of the curves and lose out into the second sector. Coming out into the third. A bump there past Lightning Tower. Here comes a lot of speed from Speedy. A nudge as they draft down the front stretch. It will be a dead heat coming off the belt. Who gets the better of them? Oh, originally it was going to be Prim, but then it was Speedy all the way through the first sector, and the lead is building. Snowy in third, Nemo, Pulsar, Shock, Rojo, Dos making an appearance in the top eight as well. Yellow, oh, and look at this right down the attenuator for the pit lane. And that loses out for Prim back to third place. Snowy, the recipient of second. A little over half a second behind Speedy, who's trying to live up to his name. Down the drop they go. Look at this big burst of speed here from Nemo, who gets by Prim. All coming undone as this race continues. A 14-lap affair, one of the longer in number that we have seen so far this season. Remember, it's a fairly short course. Watch the gap up front. Snowy seems to be looking a little racy here. Off the belt they come. 43 hundredths between them, but that gap seems to be coming down. Snowy gets in the draft just a little bit as they enter the second sector. Even closer through the hairpins. Into the chicane. As they exit here, this last turn can make or break a lap, and it is neck and neck once more. A bump down the front stretch, and look at this up the belt. Hold your breath for a second, because it's going to be all speed from here. Who gets the jump, and it is speedy. Oh, but slow off of the drop, and Snowy takes the lead. Speedy goes high off of those curves. Doesn't have to worry too much behind, because that's a huge gap back to Prim and Nemo. Pulsar, Shock, fighting for that last spot among the top eight. As Snowy out onto the front stretch, comes across the line. Look at this three-way battle back here. Knows a stern, and it's going to be a continued battle up the belt. Snowy and Speedy. They're just trying to put in some good laps to get away from this fight, because any one of these marbles that are building in that train might want to have a go. Snowy's gap has come down quite a bit. Here's Speedy. Oh, I thought going to take the pit lane once more, but instead stays out. Tries to get in the draft. We do have a taker in the pit lane, in fact. And look at how that shakes up the order. It's Prim, Shock, Yellow, Nemo, Pulsar, and Rojo Dos behind these top two. Shock in fourth place. Tries to keep it. Meanwhile, up front, that gap is big because look at what's happening here. Speedy is being occupied by Prim, and that forces the mistake into the pit lane. Prim is going to be able to take second place. One more lap to go. Snowy, but this is still anybody's race farther back behind, especially for the podium spots. Speedy takes second place. Shock goes by. Into P2. Ooh, Sublime having some trouble in the first turn, coming to a complete stop. That's going to cause a yellow. What will that do to the race finish? I don't think it should matter all that much. So Snowy should be able to hold on here in front of Shock and Speedy. Prim, Yellow, Rojo, Dos, Mimo, and Smoggy. Billy and Clementon making up the top ten. What do you say about a host curse now? Oh, and there you can see, coming to a complete stop up there. That is very unusual. If that had been during the race, no doubt we would have seen a safety marble. Well, as it is, Snowy, great job, coming all the way back from 12th to take the win. Shock, come from 8th to get there. Speedy, started in 2nd and finished 3rd, so you can't complain too much about that. But nonetheless, the pit lane causing some issues. I don't know that a lot of teams meant to take the pit lane, but the exit out of the chicane seemed to be a lot trickier than the track map might let on, and that put marbles out of sorts. And you did see that the penalty for taking the pit lane was a huge one. Great charge there. We did see some marbles also start middle of the pack, get a turn up toward the front, but were not able to finish there. In our overall standings, the Savage Speeders have now jumped both the Hazers and Team Galactic to take the lead. Look at Snowballs jumping six spots 
or Rangers, down to fifth. Be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for our next Grand Prix next week. Think of race seven as a sort of moving day here in Marbula One, as one race remains after this. Teams can position themselves perfectly for a great run at the championship, but only if they perform here at the Razway. Hey everybody, welcome, I'm Greg Woods. 15 turns and 10 laps in front of this field on what is nearly a 14 and a half meter long circuit. There you see the starting lineup with Mimo on pole, Smoggy at the hazers, rapidly close behind. Lights are on. And we're rolling, a slow start for Mimo as Smoggy takes the lead. Orangen also getting swarmed from the fourth place position and falls back halfway down the field and most of the field is stuck. We have a yellow flag and a major incident in sector one. Is this going to be a safety marble? Yes, it is. The safety marble is deployed. Smoggy holds the lead up front for Nemo and Limelime, Rapidly and Billy, but look at all of the danger up top. So many marbles are stuck. The safety marble being deployed. Let's see if the field comes through and ends up trying to push them forward. As they snake around, heavy impact here. Oh, this is all going wrong. Nearly everybody is stopped and we've got a red flag. A disaster here at the Razway. What happened there? Look at the train that is built here. And it's an accordion effect that bunches everybody up. The safety marble comes in and fails to get anybody dislodged. Here come the leaders of the race and they are bunched up. Oh my gosh, we're hearing that the race will be restarted. And Mimo is back, what is this? Hold on, we've got a track invasion now in sector three, coming up the belt and they've stopped the belt. That marble is stuck on it, and everything is unfolding here. The security marbles are on either side. The conveyor belt backing up and bringing them down. You can hear the displeasure in the fans. With all focus in the first sector, that fan was easily able to get onto the track, slipping right past security. All right, we are ready to go once again. Oh my goodness, how much energy did they all deplete? Lights are on, and we're rolling again. This time, another good start from Smoggy, and Mimo falls back behind, and a duel immediately developing up front between Rapidly and Smoggy as well. But look at Mimo, does not want to be denied. Ooh, and then right up against the attenuator in the split and loses first place to Smoggy. Orangen drafting down that little short stretch. Off the chevrons they come onto the pit straight around the hairpin and through the chicane, and it will be Smoggy leading the way at the end of lap number one. The gap is going to be fairly close, under a second to Nemo, Orangen, and Rapidly. And then it's Pulsar, Wispy, Shock, and Snowflake. Orangen in second place, Nemo trying to get a little run here, gets the speed boost. Rapidly trying to hold off Pulsar back behind. A great move there from Snowflake to jump up into seventh place. A draft right there. Oh, and a nudge off the wall sends Orangen going backwards from Mimo. Mimo was a little bit tired of getting hounded there. And now can turn attention to Smoggy. Up the belt they come on this figure eight Razway circuit. As we finally have a good race developing here after that awful start. Some of the competitors were able to keep going and We'll see how that fares, especially in the later laps here. Are they going to run out of energy as a result? Wispy into second place. Goes right down that catwalk as well. Marbles, I think, sometimes get too eager to make the pass and then forget about their line. And look at this. Smoggy being challenged. The three marble race up front. Nemo, Orangen. Smoggy manages the gap right back. It caught off guard a little bit, heading down the pit straight, but a great response. Smoggy, Orangen, and Mimo now takes second place with Shock in fourth. Anarchy up into fifth. Anarchy nowhere to be seen amongst the top ten at the start of this race. Smoggy as it is right now, sitting in seventh place in the standings, needs a great finish here, both for himself and for the team. Snowflake back down to eighth rapidly, has lost a lot of speed, and is now down to eighth as well. Coming up the belt, six tenths the difference between Smoggy and Mimo. Orangen in third with a big head of speed coming off the belt through the first sector. 
Orangen cutting that gap down to Nemo with every turn, and now it's two lengths. They bump. They all opt for the inside line there, most of them at least. Shock takes the outside. Smoggy not even in the picture. Look at this, already heading toward the hairpin. The marbles snaking their way down that pit straight. Through that little sling of a chicane. Orangen having to fend off a challenge from Anarchy, who does get by across the line. Who will be first off the belt, though? Smoggy and Nemo stretch it out. It is Anarchy, Shock, and Orangen. Wispy, Pulsar, and Rapidly. The lead up front is coming down just slightly. Trouble there on the split. Smoggy loses momentum. Nemo into the lead. One momentary lapse. And now Smoggy is going to have to play catch up. Tried to make the move into the chicane. Nothing there. Nemo closed the door or else would have lost the lead. How do they exit the belt? Pretty cleanly for Nemo. Turning a four-tenths lead into a little bit more, at least visually. Anarchy, Orange, and Wispy make the top five. Slow off that turn into the hairpin. Smoggy dives to the inside and takes the lead. But Nemo is right there again. Trying to get the over-under going off the chevrons and out onto the pit straight. Who gets the better exit out of the hairpin? And it looks like Nemo. Smoggy closing the door. Anarchy starting to creep up a little bit, as is Orangen. The top four separated by a little over a second. Nemo again bunches right back up. Anybody going to take the speed boost? Nope, they just miss it. Into the hairpin where the move was made to get the lead last time. And we've got a little bit of a difference here. Nemo to the outside, Smoggy to the in. Perhaps that was more just to try to block off Anarchy, who is right on the tail of Nemo as they head to the hairpin. Through the chicane here, Orange, a nice little dive bomb move on Anarchy. Just two laps left to go, counting this one. Smoggy, Nemo, Orange, a little gap back to Anarchy. Orange trying to size up Nemo. Wispy also trying to get racy, but a train developing behind. To the outside, again goes Mimo and loses second place to Orangen. Tries to get it back off the Chevron and does. Great racing by Mimo and Orangen. And Mimo is now setting sights on Smoggy as we head into the final lap. One length apiece, all of them coming up the belt. This is still anybody's race. Smoggy, Mimo, Orangen. Bunching up here to the outside, Nemo a little nudge, and the block is laid down. Orangen gets by into second place. Smoggy tries to go down the inside, all three of them will. Orangen needing a little bit of speed. Through the left-hander. Off the chevron, onto the pit straight. Couple of corners to go. Smoggy, Orangen, not gonna be close enough. And Smoggy will not be denied. Orangen across the line in second place. Nemo and Wispy, Anarchy rounding out the top five. Rojo Dos, Rapidly, Pulsar, Razzy, Yellow, completing the top 10. The Raspberry Racers will claim ninth at their home track, but nearly six seconds back. Orangen, with some great moves, also picks up fastest lap of the race. They are gassed, especially taking that extra lap. How did they manage that? Orangen got caught up in the melee at the start. Perhaps that ended up helping a little bit, but there were some great moves here. The mistake by Mimo, the shove by Smoggy, at the hairpin to take the lead. Neck and neck, look at Mimo's move to the outside. Nudge right there, a little bump, a shock right there to let Orangen up into second place. So the Hazers move into the top spot. Orangers jump into third. Everybody who's in yellow cannot win as we head into the final race of the inaugural Marbula One season at Midnight Bay. An entire season of ups and downs has wound through countless circuits around the world to guide us here to the Midnight Bay circuit. Hello everybody and welcome to the finale of the 2020 Marbula One season. I'm Greg Woods. The Midnight Bay circuit featuring a floodlit tunnel, an invisible bridge with no sides on it, extra grandstand to add to the ambiance and a difficult overall lap that could see a huge stratification of the entire field. There you see the overall layout just under 13 meters, 16 laps and 15 turns. The clock strikes midnight and we're ready to go. Speedy 
on pole for the Savage Speeders. And we'll talk about permutations for the championship as best we can during this frenetic race. The lights are on. And we're rolling. Speedy out of the gate. Holds the lead through the first couple of turns and winds through the chicane for the first time. The field staying bunched up close right behind Momo and Prim. Clutter comes next with a little gap back behind first time through the tunnel. Momo diving to the inside, having a little look, decides otherwise. Prim now tries to eye up Momo. Thought about diving to the inside there as they head out onto the pit straight for the first time. Also a good move developing between Clutter and Prim as well. Look at all of the marbles side by side as they come up the ramp to start lap number two. Speedy rides the curbs there. Then we've got some good battles farther back. Clutter in fourth, Yellup, Rezzy, Hazy, and Mallard. Definitely watching to see what Hazy can do for the Hazers. Finish on the podium, you win the championship. Finish fourth, as long as Savage Speeders don't get fastest lap, you're still fine. For the Speeders though, if they win and the Hazers are below or at fifth, they are the champions. 38 hundredths for Speedy, the lead up front. Momo holding back a little bit of a train behind. Prim, Clutter, Mallard, Rezzy. There's Hazy in seventh and Yellup. With a finish in seventh, the Savage Speeders or the O'Rangers have to be below second place or else the, the, the Hazers do not win the championship. They are leading overall 90 to 76. Speedy across the line. Prim gets by for second place, 73 hundredths back. Then it's Momo. Mallard jumps him off the belt and we get a lead change up front. Great move from Prim to take the lead. Speedy caught napping through the slower parts of the track. As they go through the tunnel, look at the draft, just ducking to the inside, but nothing there on the exit. Across the bridge, these top marbles all doing a very good job of avoiding careening into those blocks, but look at how close Speedy is. Look at the outside. Prim laying down the block and nothing there. Up the belt they come, just two tenths apart. Equidistant between the top three. Then it's Mallard, Clutter, Yellup, Hazy, and Rezzy. Hazy needs to get a move on, even though there's still a lot of laps left in this race. How late will he leave it? Prim's lead as big as it's been. Onto the pit straight and around the final turn. Oh, and having a little trouble getting onto the belt. It's going to be neck and neck on the exit. Speedy gets the better lead. Takes the top spot and holds on to P1 for now. Nice little duel there between them. Then it's Mallard and Momo, Clutter, and Rezzy. Hazy still in seventh. Having a little trouble there off the bridge, it looked like, and that lets Prim draw ever closer. Riding the draft down the front stretch here, and they are going to be a little bit closer. Yes, under two tenths now as they begin the next lap. A little bump off the wall there, slow for Prim, but gathers the speed back and mounts the challenge. Savage speeders. Not quite halfway through this race. For Speedy, the only one of the four challengers to start in the top half of the order. If we take a look at the field farther back, Hazy has moved into sixth place. That helps the permutations just a little bit. Again, Savage Speeders, the Arrangers cannot win the race. But if Hazy stays there otherwise, then they're fine. Speedy, Prim, Mallard, Clutter, and Momo. There you can see Hazy bunched back there, trying to size up Momo and needs to get by into fifth. After that, then things look a heck of a lot better. Speedy doing what needs to be done out front. Building that lead, it was a couple of tenths before, now it's over half a second. Oh, good block laid down there. Clutter and Mallard are locked together, and look at this, it's almost propelling them forward. Usually the battles see them get farther back from the competition up front, but in this case, they're pushing each other, and they're right on the tail of Prim. Snowy in the draft there for Momo. Now falls back just a little bit, but second, third, and fourth, all very close, and Speedy is content to let them battle. Who will get the jump first between Prim and Mallard off the belt here? And it is Mallard. But Prim tries to come right back and does around the hairpin. Through the chicane. Clutter also getting by Mallard. Wants to have a go at Speedy. Laps quickly ticking off in the Marbula 1 season. 
Butter, one length back of Prim as they head onto the front stretch. And now here comes Mallard as well. The two of them are gonna be close, Clutter and Mallard, fighting for third place. And Mallard gets the jump. Clutter and Mallard back and forth they go and they're gonna switch places several times. And look at this, Prim is now under fire as well from Mallard. Those two neck and neck as they exit the tunnel and burst back out into the lights here at Midnight Bay. A late night race. These competitors sharp as can be so far. Speedy's lead is nearing a second and a half. And with the order as it stands, the Savage Speeders will be your Marbula One champions. Mallard in second place now, having disposed of Prim. On the bridge, but Prim with a little bit more speed on the exit. A bump off the Chevron, slows down though, and now comes right back across the line. Ooh, those two are very close. Prim wanted to have a go before the belt, but now has to do it afterward. Speedy, already almost through the first sector. Look at Snowy, a great climb and is now in fourth place, having gotten by Momo and Clutter. Snowy coming out of nowhere. Our winner at the short circuit wants to continue that momentum here. Hazy falling all the way back to eighth place after a dismal qualifying. Things are slipping away for the Hazers. The Savage Speeders could be just a few laps away from claiming the inaugural Marbula One World Championship. Speedy cannot start to get ahead of himself yet. Mallard and Prim. I think they can sense Snowy on a charge behind him. And sure enough, here comes Snowy to the inside. Can't get it done that time. Still has a couple of laps. Over 25 meters left. The gap is coming down just a little bit up front. Mallard can see Speedy through the turns. From there, it's a good gap back. Prim, Snowy, Clutter, Momo, Rezzy, and Hazy, who has been stuck in the bottom part of the top 10 for this entire race after making a great start from second to last. Snowy again trying to draft down the front stretch, and it's gonna be neck and neck as they come off the belt this time. But up front, Speedy already away to start the final lap. Oh, and you can definitely see Mallard closing up just a little bit. That is important because if Mallard does get by and the speeders finish second, they need the Hazers to be ninth or lower, and they're currently not there. But if they hold the lead, they will win the entire championship. We started this season at the Savage Speedway, and now Savage Speeders onto the front stretch, around the turn. They will win the race and the season. The Savage Speeders are the Marbula One World Champions. Snowy in third, Prim, Clutter, Momo, Rezzy, and Hazy back there in eighth for the formerly championship leading Hazers. Disappointing finish also for the Old Rangers, Clementon down in 12th. Team Galactic, 15th with Starry. Snowy did set the fastest lap, by the way. A little bit of pride to end the season. But how about that? The Savage Speeders set themselves up perfectly in the final race. Best qualifying out of the top four. Two lead changes, 27 overtakes in the top five. Speedy also, with that finish, claims the individual championship. Well, there's certainly a lot to celebrate here. Thank you so much for watching and enjoying this season. We will keep making new races, which we will announce soon, including the Marble League 2020. And we hope to reach a million subscribers very soon. Thank you so much for this fascinating season of Barbie the One. I'm Greg Woods. Time for the opening ceremony. So long, everyone.